Akari is a character who was rarely mentioned at the beginning of the story, but became a prominent figure around the Calling Games arc, and he quickly became known as one of the strongest people in Jujutsu Kaisen. And although we didn't know much about him, after his introduction and his fight with Kashimo, we all fell in love with his character and his abilities. As for the disaster curses, we were introduced to them early on in the series as the main antagonist group. We saw Jogo fight against Gojo early on and he got beat up. Then we saw Mahito versus Nanami and Yuji. Then we saw Hanami versus Yuji and Toto in Goodwill. And finally, we got Dagon versus Nanami, Naobito, Maki, and ultimately Toji. Throughout all of these fights, plus a couple of others that they got into up until their end in Shibuya, we got to get a good gauge on their skill and how strong they actually are. And today in this video, we're going to be taking the disaster curses at their strongest moments before they died and putting them up against Hikari in a 1 vs 4 fight. As for the forms that everybody will be starting in, Hikari will start off in his base form, Mahito will start off in his true soul form, Jogo and Hanami will start off in the forms we always see them in, you know, they never really get new forms, and Dagon will be starting off in his grown up form. You might be wondering why Mahito gets to start off in his true form and Dagon gets to start off in his adult form, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter which form they start in. Either way, if the disaster curses were to ever come across Akari, they would get absolutely slammed. So let's get started by seeing how strong the disaster curses are first, what abilities they have that would pose a threat against Akari, and how useful these abilities would be. Since Jogo and Hanami are the only two of the group that don't get any upgrades, we will start off with them first. So starting off with Hanami, the first thing we know is that he's super tough. In a chapter extra it says, Hanami is super tough. Jogo is technically stronger considering how their elemental types match up. However, if he were to ever receive 5 of Itadori's black flash attacks on top of Toto's cursed energy infused with playful cloud, he would die instantly. So right here is basically saying Hanami is more durable than Jogo is. You know it is very impressive all of the hits that Hanami took throughout Goodwill. If we look back at all of the major attacks that Hanami was hit with, we get to see how impressive it actually is that Hanami was still standing by the end of Goodwill. The first major attack that Hanami took was the piercing blood from Kamo, then Hanami was hit with playful cloud from Maki, then, when he went on to fight Yuji and Toto, Hanami took 5 black flashes from Yuji while also being beat up by Toto. And even Toto hitting Hanami with a playful cloud was not enough to take Hanami down. And even after getting hit by purple from Gojo, Hanami was still able to run away and hide beneath the ground. Now the most important part about this is that Hanami did have to keep healing in order to stay up. It's not like Hanami was just taking all of the hits and all of the hits piled up and Hanami never folded. It's more so like after every time Hanami was dealt a big hit, Hanami would heal up. And there was even a moment in the fight when Hanami had to remove the patch on his arm so he could suck up the plants around him and grow in strength. But one major thing that we do have to note is that Yuji and Toto at the time of Goodwill were strong enough to damage Hanami. After being hit, Hanami says, what a heavy hit. It's not quite as heavy as the Black Flash hit from earlier. However, individually, they both have enough power to hurt me. So we know that even though they weren't actually able to exercise Hanami in the end, they are strong enough to damage Hanami at this time in Goodwill. Now in terms of offense, Hanami isn't really fast. Hanami is only about as fast as Yuji and Toto in Goodwill. And when it comes to his attacks, there's only one of them that might be useful against Sakari, and that is the buds that suck on Curse Energy. Now the thing that we don't know about the bud technique is how much Curse Energy it can absorb before it reaches a limit. Remember Awasaka when Yuji and Megami had to fight him at the beginning of Shibuya? Awasaka had a technique that big attacks would do little damage and little attacks would do big damage. So you might think that even if Awasaka was hit by purple, he would just take it and the damage would be little. But it's said that Awasaka's technique had a limit to it. And that is the thing here with Hanami. We don't know if there's a limit to the amount that it could absorb as well, or if the buds can just absorb curse energy infinitely. Because we do know that Akari has a state where he has an infinite amount of curse energy, and if the buds were to even land, would it be able to just suck all of the curse energy away while Hikari is in his jackpot state? Because the buds just are a jujutsu technique. In order for the buds to suck up an infinite amount of curse energy, that means that they must have some infinite amount of storage, or it has some place where it sends the curse energy to, 
infinitely. And the odds of Hanami's technique being able to do this or having an infinite storage just seem unlikely. You know, I feel like if the buds were this strong, it would have been included in the explanation somewhere. But there's no way for us to know because Hanami was killed off before we ever got a full breakdown. But I don't think that the buds would land on Hikari anyway. I think Hikari is much, much faster than Hanami, especially because Hanami is only as fast as Yuji and Toto in Goodwill. But I'll get more into that when I get to the Hikari part of the video. And as for a domain expansion, we never got to see what Hanami's domain was. But we do know that Hanami did need to suck up a lot of flowers in the forest before he could even use it. So the combination of us not knowing what Hanami's domain expansion is, plus the ridiculous prerequisite we saw of having to suck up a bunch of flowers around him, I don't think Hanami would ever even get this domain expansion off against Hikari. And I also think Hanami would just die trying to fight Hikari before even trying to use domain expansion. Similar to what happened to Hanami when he tried to fight against Gojo in Shibuya. Now, there'd be no point in me bringing up what happened when Hanami tried to fight against Gojo in Shibuya, as there was nothing impressive there for Hanami anyways, and the only thing Hanami did was try to use domain amplification. It failed, and Hanami just died. So we can just go ahead and move on to the Jogo part of the video. Now, Jogo is the only person out of the disaster curses who it's the hardest to tell how strong he actually is, because the only two main fights we got to see him be a part of were against the two strongest people in the series. He got beat up badly by Gojo and he got absolutely stomped by Sukuna as well. But we know Jogo isn't weak. We know that Kenjaku says if he's being nice, he would say that Jogo is around 8 or 9 Sukuna fingers. But once again, Kenjaku is saying this is if he is being nice. And we know that when Gojo starts to fight Jogo, he says that Jogo is probably stronger than Sukuna currently. And the current Sukuna by this point was three fingers level in strength. But the thing with this is that Gojo was basing this off of curse energy as their fight hadn't actually started yet. And we know that after Mahito came across Sukuna, Mahito said even though Jogo has more curse energy than Sukuna, Sukuna's soul is on another level. And he was so impressed by three finger Sukuna's soul that he's confident that even if all of the disaster curses were annihilated, as long as Sukuna is revived, the Age of Cursed Spirits will come to fruition. Now, there is another argument for Three Finger Sukuna being stronger than Jogo, but I'm just warning you now, it is a bit weird, so if you decide to not believe it, then that's completely fine. But in order to be as informative as possible, I might as well say the argument anyways. So I remember when 15 Finger Sukuna fought against Jogo and it was basically a no diff. Jogo wasn't even able to land a hit on Sukuna. It was so bad that Sukuna was treating Jogo like he was a little kid. Now think about what happened when that same Sukuna fought Maharaga right after. Maharaga wasn't completely scaling to Sukuna in terms of speed or strength. But Maharaga definitely gave Sukuna more of a problem than Jogo did. The fight could even be summed up as maybe a mid difficulty for Sukuna. And Sukuna even said during that fight that if he was in his three finger form, then Maharaga may have been able to beat him. So the way you can think about it is, three finger Sukuna is around the same level as Maharaga, and Maharaga is stronger than Jogo because Maharaga was able to give 15 finger Sukuna much more problems than Jogo was able to give 15 finger Sukuna. Because Jogo wasn't even able to hit Sukuna, he got completely no diffed. But Maharaga was able to somewhat scale to Sukuna, but he ultimately lost in the end. So, if 3 finger Sukuna via the 15 finger Sukuna statement is around Maharaga level in strength, then this means that 3 finger Sukuna and Maharaga being that level would be stronger than Jogo, as Maharaga was able to give Sukuna more difficulties than Jogo was. That is the argument. But there are some ways you can interpret the statement that 15 Finger Sukuna says when he said that he may have lost if it was him from back then when he was referencing his Three Finger self. The first thing we know is maybe he said that he would have lost because Three Finger's domain expansion was too weak. Or maybe he said that he would have lost because the flame arrow that he actually ends up defeating Maharaga with 
wouldn't be able to take out the current Maharaka. There are just different ways you can interpret that statement, which is why I said the argument in itself is a bit weird. But if you do believe that Three Finger Sukuna is just around Maharaga level in strength via that statement, then you would agree that Three Finger Sukuna would be stronger than Jogo. Now, when it comes to Jogo's offense, I actually believe his attacks are just one of the worst to go up against Akari especially if Akari was in his jackpot form. Because we know that Jogo did burn Maki, but she didn't even die from the burns. She actually healed and got up after and went and eventually fought the Zenin clan. This is the same for Nanami as well. We know that Jogo placed his palm on Nanami's body, burned him, but Nanami was still able to get up and fight against curses later in Shibuya. So I won't say that Jogo's burns are weak, but they just don't have the amount of destruction that would be needed to fight against Hikari. And we know that in his jackpot form, Hikari has an infinite amount of curse energy and automatic reverse curse technique. So even if Jogo was able to land a hit on Hikari, he would just heal from it automatically and he would begin to get hit by attacks from Akari. And when it comes to Jogo's maximum meteor, although it does look destructive and attack potency as it is able to level a city, the speed of maximum meteor is just extremely slow. As maximum meteor is falling to the ground, Sukuna makes Panda, Kusakabe, and a few others wait until the last second before they are allowed to move. And even waiting until the last second, they were still able to escape the damage from the Maximum Meteor. So even though Maximum Meteor is destructive, if Panda and Kusakabe can see it coming, wait until the last second and still run from the blast radius, then it just isn't that fast. And it definitely would not be able to hit Hikari. So I think that even though Jogo is strong within his own right, the matchup would just be too bad for him to do anything significant in the match against Hikari. And we'll get more in detail about the Hikari stuff once we get to his part. Now going on to Dagon, the weird thing is we don't have a lot of time with him when he's in his grown up form. We know that these curse wombs undergo a metamorphosis, so we don't get a lot of time with Dagon in his baby form, and most of the time we see Dagon is in his domain, but we actually do get to see a short amount of time in between, and we can use the time in between Dagon's baby form and his domain expansion to get a gauge for how strong base Dagon is. Now, the thing with Dagon is that he is very durable. You know, Nanami isn't able to damage him even while using his ratio technique. And this is actually impressive as we know that Eno, after he sees Yuji punch the barrier trying to get into Shibuya, Eno says that Nanami and Yuji are around the same level in striking power. And we know that Yuji was able to damage Hanami back in Goodwill. So if Yuji was able to damage Hanami and Yuji and Nanami are relative in terms of striking power and Nanami can't damage Dagon, but Yuji can damage Hanami, and this would mean that Dagon has a higher durability than Hanami does. But just having this high level of durability doesn't do him much because we know that Naobito is able to just beat him in one quick blitz session and all of that durability goes out the window once Naobito starts to pile on attacks. It's just another case of showing, well, yes, you may be very durable, you might even be more durable than Hanami, but you still don't have enough durability to deal with a grade one sorcerer hitting you with multiple attacks. We also know that Naobito was moving very fast, but even with this in mind, Dagon not being able to beat Naobito who was just a grade 1 sorcerer just puts a cap on how high you can put Dagon in terms of strength. Most of his impressive feats come inside his domain expansion, and yes his domain expansion is very strong, he gains the piranhas which are a sure hit, and the fish do a lot of damage, they even end up taking off Naobito's arm. But I don't think Dagon would get his domain up against Akari in the first place. I think that Akari would exercise him, beat him up worse than Naobito did because, well, yeah, I think Akari is stronger than Naobito, and Dagon would just be exercised before he uses his domain expansion. But I will also cover a scenario where they actually do open their domain expansions, but I'll bring that up a bit later. Now we can move on to arguably the strongest disaster curse in his final moments, Mahito. And we're taking the Mahito in his true soul form, the form that he ultimately lost to Yuji in at the end of their fight. And the thing with this form is that, although it is a completely new form, the only thing that we learn about it is that he's supposed to have gotten 200% tougher. There's no speed increase as Yuji is still around that level of speed with Mahito. 
and it doesn't look like there's a strength increase either. It just seems that there is a durability increase as that is all that's stated in the chapter extra and that is all that is shown throughout his fight with Yuji. Now when it comes to how fast Mahito is, no surprise but yeah Mahito is around Yuji level in terms of speed in their fight. It seems that every time they've ever fought throughout the series, they have always been relative. That is sort of the narrative behind Yuji and Mahito anyway, that they are two sides of the same coin and that they are the opposites of each other. And throughout Shibuya, since the beginning of their fight up until Toto comes and all the way until the end of their fight, Yuji and Mahito were always relative in speed. Now when it comes to abilities and Mahito's durability himself, the parts where it gets interesting is Mahito's curse technique and how you can hit him and how he hits you. We know that Mahito is different from everybody else. His durability is contingent on his soul. If you can't hit Mahito's soul, you can't exercise him. And at the same time, if Mahito touches your soul, then he can transfigure you and you will lose. So Mahito doesn't need an extremely hard punch. Mahito doesn't have to be the heaviest hitter around. As long as he can place his palm on you and transfigure your soul, then you will lose the fight to him. And when it comes to his durability, Mahito says that even if he's crushed to bits, he'll be fine as long as his soul is intact. The best thing Mahito has is his domain expansion that he copies after seeing Gojo use one in Shibuya. Gojo was able to use a 0.2 second domain expansion in which he activated his domain and the sure hit at the exact same time. Which means as you were getting hit by the domain, you were also being hit by the sure hit. And we see this happens to Toto after Mahito pops his domain expansion. How would Hikari deal with all of these abilities? How would Hikari stack up in terms of power against the disaster curses. Well, we can get a gauge for this based on the Hikari statements and feats that we see him perform during the calling games. One of the statements comes from Yuta himself, when Yuta says that when Hikari is on a roll, he is even stronger than he is. And we know this is a big feat as Yuta is stated second to Gojo in terms of unusual abilities. And depending on the translation you use, it is also said that Yuta is just second to Gojo. But Yuta is saying that there is one condition in which Hikari is actually stronger than this. And this condition is when Hikari is in his jackpot state. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is Hikari in his jackpot state. And how would Hikari get into a jackpot state against the disaster curses. But there are two main things that we need to keep in mind when talking about Hikari's domain expansion. One is that Hikari's domain is exceptionally strong in tug of war battles. And two is that Hikari's sure hit activation is faster than even Mahito's. To start off with the tug of war's translation error, there was a part in Viz where they mistranslated something that ended up being left out of the manga as a whole. Where Viz says, since the guaranteed hit in Hikari's domain is harmless, he can be aggressive and his curse technique activation is fast, Viz took the kanji for aggressiveness or forcefulness and translated it without taking context into account. But there is a translator on Twitter called Lightning446 and you should check them out. They translate a bunch of things for Jujutsu Kaisen, Dragon Ball, Chainsaw Man, and other things. And Lightning is actually so good at translating that Viz has actually hired Lightning. Because, well, Lightning has continued to debunk Viz on a bunch of translation errors in the past. But basically, the kanji is supposed to say that Hikari's domain expansion is exceptionally strong in a tug of war domain clash. And the reason this is, is because his sure hit is harmless. Because Hikari's sure hit is just his game. And Lightning even says that even though this is his own theory, Lightning thinks that since Hikari's domain expansion is strong or resistant in a tug of war, that he would be able to continue to roll the jackpot even in a domain battle. Because Hikari's sure hit of the rules in his game would already be rolling before the other person even has a chance to activate their domain expansion. And since this implied Mahito has the strongest domain expansion out of the disaster curses, and Hikari's curse technique activation within his domain is even faster than Mahito's, then Hikari activating his domain playing his game and beating Mahito in a domain clash is very likely. And this is if Mahito is even able to domain clash. After Hikari starts his game and the rules flood into Mahito's head, he will be forced to take part in the game. And there is a promotional guide posted and it has an excerpt about Hikari. And in this excerpt it says, before joining the calling games, the two of them head out to meet up with the suspended third year student, Hikari Kenji to rope him in and join forces. 
What exactly is his ability that makes him stronger than even a Kotsu when he's on a roll? Now, I just want to preface this by saying this translation is from Twitter. You know, Twitter translators do tend to take these things that Viz and other publishing companies don't translate and translate them themselves. But it's just further confirmation about Hikari and his jackpot state being stronger than Yuta. And even if you don't agree with all of the Hikari statements, in the recent chapters it said that Hikari is one of the heavy hitters, along with Yuta and Ma. So Hakari, Yuda, and Maki are just all around this level of power that is above everybody else currently, except for Gojo and Sukuna. And we know that once Hakari is in his jackpot state, he gains two of some of the most broken abilities in Jujutsu Kaisen. One is an automatic reverse curse technique that is always active for 4 minutes and 11 seconds, meaning that you can take an entire limb off from Hakari's and it will just come right back. And two, he has an infinite amount of curse energy at his disposal while he is fighting you, and this is all while he's in his jackpot state. So when it comes down to a fight with the disaster curses, the first two people that go out automatically are just Hanami and Dagon. Hanami was getting damaged and was only around the level of Yuji and Toto from back in Goodwill. And Dagon got beat up by a grade 1 sorcerer. Those two just get beaten near automatically. Now Jogo is fast, but for the tight matchup that is against Akari, you know, the burning that doesn't seem too powerful is Nanami and Maki were able to recover from it, combined with Akari being in his automatic RCT form. Even if Jogo does land a hit, Hikari would just be able to heal from it, continue to pile on attacks, and eventually exercise Jogo. The only person that you may think would cause Hikari problems is Mahito because while well, you're wondering, how would Hikari be able to exercise Mahito? And one of the things we know is that domain expansions neutralize curse techniques. Remember how Akari was able to fight with Charles while his domain expansion was up? If you replace Mahito in that situation, Mahito would be vulnerable to all of Akari's attacks because Mahito's durability, his idle transfiguration, is a curse technique. And while Mahito is within Hikari's domain expansion, this curse technique would be negated because we know that all domains neutralize curse techniques. So the domain activation route is a way that Hikari can just beat up Mahito, but this isn't the only way. Since we know that Mahito keeps his form together with a curse technique, Hikari could just continue to beat him up and blitz him until he eventually just runs out of curse energy. Because we know that Mahito is just around Shibuya Yuji level in power, and speed and we know that Hikari is much faster than this so Hikari should be able to just be blitzing Mahito until he runs out of curse energy or the other solution that I gave earlier where he just activates his domain expansion and beats Mahito up while he's inside it. And another thing is, we're not even sure if you can heal from Mahito's soul transfiguration with reverse curse technique or not. So even if you do think Mahito is fast enough to land a hit on Hikari, we don't know if Hikari can heal from it or not. If we use Viz's translation, remember back when Mahito transfigured Junpei, Mahito actually implies that Sukuna would be able to heal Junpei using RCT. And if this is correct, going by Viz's translation, then Hikari would just be able to heal himself in his jackpot state because his reverse curse technique would just be healing his soul. And another thing is, Mahito's idol transfiguration might just not even be powerful enough to damage Akari. Remember when Mahito used idol transfiguration on Nanami and Nanami was subconsciously protecting his soul? It might be the same for Hikari's jackpot state where since he has an infinite amount of cursed energy running through his body, his soul would just be being protected and Mahito's idol transfiguration wouldn't be able to reach him. But this is a big maybe, it's just something to take into account when thinking about the matchup. But I don't think Mahito is fast enough to tag Hikari anyway, and since Mahito is the biggest threat out of all of the disaster curses, after Hikari beats him, anybody left standing, if anybody is left standing after that, would just be free game. Because none of the other disaster curses even have abilities that would pose a threat to Akari in his jackpot state. So with Hikari's domain being exceptionally strong in tug of war battles, him getting two broken abilities as a byproduct of his domain expansion, one of them being an infinite amount of curse energy and the other being an automatic reverse curse technique, combined with these statements like him being stronger than Yuta on a roll and him being one of the heavy hitters in the current age, I definitely believe that if Akari were to come across the disaster curses, he would be able to body slam all of them. And with that being said, thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. 
If you enjoyed, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as I do post on different topics that you guys give me and a few that I come up with on my own. Thank you so much. See you next time.